Whether you're running Windows Server 2012, 2016, 2019, or 2022, upgrading to Windows Server 2025 is entirely possible. But there are a few key differences you need to know before starting. In this video, I'll walk you guys through step-by-step -step how to perform a full in-place upgrade to Windows Server 2025 using the official retail ISO file. We'll cover how to prepare your system, what carries over, what doesn't, and how to handle things like RDS licensing, SQL Server, and other installed roles so that nothing breaks after the upgrade. If you're upgrading from 2012 or 2016, you'll need to go through a couple of versions first, but the process itself does look the same. I'll explain exactly what to do for each version as we go. Now, one final note before we start, an in-place upgrade lets you move to Windows Server 2025 while keeping your users, shares, Active Directory roles, and apps. So let's go ahead and jump onto the computer portion of this tutorial. I am currently in my Windows Server 2019 virtual machine. I actually have SQL Server configured here. So this will be a good opportunity for us to talk through uh, the process for me upgrading this server. So the very first thing we're gonna do is check our compatibility and system requirements. I'll start by checking whether we have server standard or data center. Again, I'm on server 2019, uh, but let's we'll start in the PowerShell. We can see it in our start menu here and we'll right click and run this as administrator. All right, once we're in our PowerShell, simply just gonna type winver, Windows version. All right, so we can see that we have Windows Server 2019 standard. Next up, I'm gonna go into my settings and let's go to system and let's go to about. So what I'm checking for here is to make sure that we have the requirements to support Windows Server 2025. Server 2025 requires TPM 2.0, secure boot, 64-bit CPU, and at least 16 gigs of RAM as recommended. So we can see we have our 64-bit processor here. Since this is a VM, I have less RAM allocated, but I'm not concerned about that for this application. Uh, we wanna make sure we have at least 30 gigabytes of disk space free. So it's a good idea to confirm these before starting. Okay, let's check whether we have TPM 2.0. So I'll do Windows key and R together. And let's type tpm.msc. All right, so it's not showing us here, likely because I'm on a Hyper-V virtual machine, uh, but we should be fine with this. Lastly, I'll check the disk space. If I go to this PC, check my local disk. So I only have 3.9 gigabytes available of my 19.4 gigabytes. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm gonna shut this down. You guys can follow along if you're in Hyper-V like I am. I'm gonna turn this off and let's hit settings and we'll go to virtual hard disk, which is under the IDE controller zero. I'm gonna click edit and I want to expand the capacity of this virtual disk and I'll hit next. And I wanna give myself an additional 30 gigs. So we'll call it 51 and I'll hit next, I hit finish. All right, now we can go back into our server and I'll have the required 30 gigs of space to make this upgrade. All right, so for step three, we wanna cover backing up everything. We wanna back up our system state. We wanna back up our critical roles. We want to back up our databases and our RDS licensing data if applicable. Okay, so in order to access backup on Windows Server, we wanna to go to our server manager can find that in our start menu or by searching for it. And we'll click uh, tools up here in the top right. And then from tools, we want to access Windows Backup. It's all the way at the bottom. We can go to local backup. We have a little action menu here. And we can click backup once. It's gonna bring up our backup wizard. So we just recommend going through, making sure that your backup is complete and secure before we move on to step four. So just follow along with the wizard. Make sure that your critical roles, your system state and databases are all backed up. All right, let's go back into the PowerShell. We're gonna to go to step four now. All right, so once we're in PowerShell, we now wanna check our current roles and features. This is a bit of a longer command here. We'll leave this in the description for you guys. With the command pasted and we'll press enter. It's gonna give us a snapshot of all currently installed roles and features. It's an easy way to verify that everything transfers correctly once we're on server 2025. All right, so at this point, we can actually mount and launch our Windows Server 2025 ISO. I went ahead and downloaded that. If you still need a license key for Windows Server 2025 or the image installation file, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have those links down below. At Indigo Software, we offer genuine Microsoft software at a great price, complete with video training and tech support. All right, so I'm gonna go to my downloads folder here where I have my ISO file. All right, guys, so my file just finished downloading here. 
pull that up in our files and I'm just gonna right click and hit mount. So once we're in here, we want to run this setup.exe. So I'll double click. I'm gonna click change how setup downloads updates. And I just wanna make sure the option to download updates, drivers and optional features is selected, which it is. I'll press next. Also one important note that we have here is that this process requires a non-evaluation ISO. We touched on this earlier. If you get your product from Indigo Software, we will provide you with this ISO. If you got your software from elsewhere, totally fine as well. Just making sure that the ISO is a non-evaluation version of the ISO. So we're just gonna let this load. Okay, and then here we have our method of licensing. Okay, so here I'm gonna select use a product key. And this is where I'm gonna enter my official product key. We're gonna blur this on the screen, but this is where you would add your actual product key. And once you've entered that, simply press next. For the image, I want the desktop experience like we have now. I could choose standard if I just wanted the core edition, but again, we're doing an in-place upgrade, so I want the desktop experience. All right, and we're gonna let the upgrade run. This process could take 30 to 60 minutes. Let me press accept on this agreement here. This is where we actually make the in-place upgrade. Make sure that keep file settings and apps is checked. Be very careful not to hit nothing, uh, unless you want you know, a clean install, which you could do. Uh, but we wanna keep file settings and apps. We'll press next. We have a final ready to install page. We can hit change what to keep, which is what we already selected. All right, and finally, let's hit install. So again, this is gonna take a bit. Uh, we'll come back at the end to do a post upgrade verification, but that is it in terms of the in-place upgrade steps. All right, guys, so we are in the Windows Boot Manager. The upgrade just finished. I'm gonna press enter, and we're gonna log in, and then we'll do our post upgrade verification, and we'll verify the activation status. So I'll log in as administrator. All right, guys, so once we log back into the server after the install, I just opened up PowerShell, which we're gonna use for that verification. So again, I'll type the same command we used earlier, winvert. Here we can see Windows Server 2025 standard. Now, after that, we can run the same command that we ran earlier, and we'll press enter. We just wanna make sure that our roles like Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP are appearing as they did before. So we can also verify our activation from PowerShell, SLM, GR, once again, forward slash XPR. And we can see that the machine is permanently activated, Windows Server standard, so we're good there. Now, a couple of callouts for application and role notes. So for RDS, our configuration will remain, uh, but we must reactivate our licensing server to generate new 2025 compatible CALs. Also for SQL Server, the server remains installed, but Microsoft recommends running Repair Edition Upgrade and Service Pack Update post upgrade. So it's just important to test those after the upgrade. All right guys, so the last little bit of the video that we wanted to cover is upgrading from an older version such as 2012 or 2016. So the short answer is that yes, we can upgrade from Windows Server 2012 R2 all the way to Windows Server 2025 and Microsoft finally supports it directly. There's a big caveat though. So this is a four generation jump, again from 2012 to 2025 and it comes with more risk than an upgrade from 2016 or 2019. So we would suggest ironclad backups, and if it's a domain controller or critical production server without redundancy, you're taking a chance. It's worth stressing that Microsoft did not support that path as a launch and only recently made it officially supported for non-clustered servers. So this means that testing matters. So the smoother, safer recommended approach is basically following a stage upgrade where we would start on 2012, spin up a temporary intermediary server, say 2016 or 2019, migrate roles over and then demote the old server. And after that, we could introduce our new 2025 server, move the roles again and retire the legacy box. Long story short, we just wanna make sure that if we're doing this, yes, it's possible, uh, but only if we're fully backed up and ready for that extra risk. All right, guys, so that is the complete process of upgrading from Windows Server 2019 all the way to Windows Server 2025. If you have any questions about anything we covered, feel free to drop those in the comments below. and We'll get back with you as soon as we can. If you're interested in purchasing Windows Server, Windows 10, Windows 11, remote desktop licenses, Microsoft Office, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll put links down below. As our channel grows, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas. If you have any ideas of your own, we'd love to know what those are. Most viewer commented video requests get made into actual videos on our channel. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support the channel. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.